paper or plastic. Welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith. In today's episode, we're going to be comparing two piles of wood. One that we made ourselves and one that we bought at our local hobby store. To begin, we're going to take a look at these piles of wood from WizKids and their Wave 10 Deep Cut Series Miniatures. These miniatures are molded from plastic and you can purchase them already primed, which is an awesome feature. There are three wood piles in the set, which cost me $7 at my local hobby store. The back shows an example of their models already painted, which I find interesting since that's not how cut wood actually looks. Now we're going to carefully open this package with a craft knife. The reason that I'm careful about opening this is because I want to preserve the packaging. This package will make a great container for mixing paints, washes, thinning inks, and so on. If you've seen me use these in other Gamesmith videos, this is where I get them. So thanks WizKids for thinking of us crafters. Taking a closer look at our plastic wood piles, I really like the detail on the small ones. You can really see the detailed wood grain. There are no mold lines, but there is a bit of flashing on the bottom edges. The small piles are identical, obviously it's the same mold used for both. The bigger log stack has a great wood texture covering the sides. However, we can see a mold line across the length of the wood pile. We're going to copy these plastic wood piles, and then we're going to paint both versions and compare the results. So this miniature is about 25 64ths of an inch wide, if I'm reading this correctly. I don't think I can reduce that fraction any smaller. Otherwise, we have a width of about 10 millimeters or one centimeter. Metric is so much easier, <laughs> I'm just saying. For our build, we're gonna use a wide variety of wood dowels I found at the dollar store. We have four different sizes to mimic the width of the logs on our wood piles. I don't have a lot of tools, but I do have a miter box that I found at the dollar store. And we also have a dollar store hacksaw to cut our wood dowels. To begin our build, we'll just start cutting the dowels. We want to measure these dowels to be about a centimeter wide. Now that we have all these pieces, we'll switch to a thicker dowel and keep cutting. I'll cut a few of these and skip ahead. Now that we have a few handfuls of these different sized dowels, we need to split them in half. I have no idea how many pieces I'm going to need to copy our deep cuts miniatures. To be on the safe side, I'll make sure to cut too many and save the excess. Here we have what I think are a few basic tools that everyone is likely to have. A hammer, a flathead or wedge screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and the hacksaw we used earlier. We're going to use these tools to safely split this small section of dowel. To accomplish that, we put the dowel in the pliers so that half the dowel is raised above the jaws. Then we use the hacksaw to cut a line down the length of the dowel. The result is a fracture plane that we can place our wedge screwdriver in. Then holding the dowel and the screwdriver together, we can give the screwdriver a few good whacks with the hammer. And voila, we have split our log. We can even go one step further and repeat the process and split the dowel again. We can zoom in and take a look at the awesome wood grain textures we've created for our log piles. For the base of our wood pile builds, we can use a clear plastic container. We want to match the base size of our bought wood pile. Then we just cut the clear plastic to the size we want so our bot and our build wood piles are relatively the same size. To glue our wood pile together, I suggest using either tacky glue or wood glue. Both of these brands I found at the dollar store. The wood glue is sandable and stainable, which will work well on this project. The tacky glue works well because it dries quickly and prevents our logs from sliding around while we're building our wood pile. To begin our large wood pile, I'm gonna tape our base to the work surface so it won't slide around. Then we want to keep our split dowel pieces nearby. I'll take a quick look at the bot wood pile to get a reference, and then we can start assembling our pieces. I'm gonna start at one end and then alternate how I place the dowels. Flat side up, flat side down, flat side up, and so on. The dowels can spill over the ends, but we wanna keep our sides mostly within the boundaries of our base. When we add more glue to our next layer, you can see why we want the glue to be on the thicker side. We don't want our pieces to slide around, and we need some time to puzzle our split logs together. I realize these wood pieces are much larger than the very small logs in the store-bought wood pile. As a result, this DIY wood pile is a bit larger compared to the normal 28mm miniature. 
but we can use the pile for both medium and large creatures. I talk about this idea quite a bit in our 5 Scatter Terrain Hacks video. I'll put a link in the corner for you. As we build up each layer of our wood pile, it's important to remember to shrink our rows as the pile gets taller. After all, we want our built version to be relatively the same size as our bot version. As we reach the top layer of the pile, we want to make sure the side of the log with the most wood grain is exposed. We can scrape away any glue or wait until it dries and use a hobby knife to do it. Here's a final look at our large wood pile before we let the glue dry for a few hours. Now we'll turn our attention to the smaller wood piles. We're going to repeat our process for these miniatures as well. We'll start with a base of relatively the same size. Then we need only stack our split wood dowels into a haphazard fashion. I'm not trying to duplicate the exact look of the smaller bot wood piles, but only their misshapen stacked appearance. I also want to keep as much of the wood grain visible as possible. And now that we're done with the smaller wood pile, we can compare it to the plastic original. The glue will dry clear, but it'll take a few hours. Now it's time to paint our log piles. We're going to use the same wood stain that we used in our Piers and Docks video. If you'd like to watch that, I'll put a link up in the corner for you. We'll use a ratty brush and a tattered old rag. We'll start with the bot wood pile. I'm quite sure I can hear many of you cringing at the idea of using wood stain on primered plastic. Well, primered is the operative word. The stain will act almost normally on our bot wood pile. Traditionally, we would wipe the stain off a wood surface to maximize its wooden appearance. However, if we wipe the plastic surface, the stain is almost entirely removed. So we don't want to do that. Then we let the wood pile dry. Next, we'll stain our built wood piles in the traditional manner. We soak the wood with the stain and use the rag to remove the excess from the surface. We want the stain to seep into the recesses of the wood grain, much like a wash. And speaking of washes, after the wood piles have dried, I want to add a wash. I'm going to use Citadel's Agrax Earthshade, but any brown wash will do. We liberally apply the wash to our built and our bought wood piles. We use the wash just like we did the stain, but we don't want to wipe the wash off. And when we're done, we want to leave the wash to dry for a few hours. Now we get to add a dry brush to highlight all the wood grain textures on all our wood piles. This is just a traditional dry brush in which we load very little tan paint into our brush. We want to add two separate layers of dry brushing to our logs. We want a light dry brushing on all our surface features that look like tree bark. But we want to add another layer of dry brushing to our interior features. After all, when you split a log open, the tree bark on the outside is typically darker than the wood interior. And with two coats of dry brushing, we can accomplish this look, while still keeping the highlighted features we created earlier with the stain and washes. Our last step is to add a matte varnish to our wood piles. I'm using the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, but any matte varnish will work. Make sure to follow the instructions on any product you use. Here are the final products of our build versus bought wood piles. The stain and the dry brushing has produced some wonderful textures. I like this one because of the scale for 28mm miniatures. And I like this one because it's an easy DIY build. Likewise on the smaller wood piles, I think they both look great and will make an awesome addition to my table. Truthfully, there are a lot of projects we could define as built versus bought. In fact, just about everything we build here at the Gamesmith can be purchased somewhere else. So, isn't really everything we build built versus bought? When I saw the woodpile miniature at my local hobby store, I seriously questioned why anyone would purchase it. Then I created a lonely farm location for my game table, and I needed some wood piles. Then I created a lumber camp encounter, and I really needed wood piles. So it turns out that WizKids has anticipated my needs before I even knew I had them. Please let me know in the comments section what you think of this build versus bot themed video. If you'd like to support us here at the Gamesmith, please subscribe and comment, or tell a friend about the channel. You can also sign up to be a Patreon supporter, and for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to exclusive content. You can also check out our website at thegamesmith.org and read our blog posts. Check out our supply lists and visit our new Amazon affiliate links. By making any kind of purchase through any of these Amazon affiliate links, we get a small amount of money to help fund the channel. We're also on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, so please check us out and share us on social media. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.